Hi, welcome to chapter 21, part 1 of the UVM Primer code videos. Uh, my name is Ray Slemmy. I'm the author of the UVM Primer. In this chapter, we're going to look at creating UVM transactions. And because there are two pieces of this, there's creating and defining transactions and then using them in the test bench, we're going to break this into two, uh, into two videos. So the first thing we're going to say is tr UVM transactions and transaction level modeling is the uh, is a technique where you use classes and objects to move data around a test bench instead of built-in types or things like structs. So up until now, for example, we've had this struct called command s that we've been using to define commands. And uh, because of that struct, you know, if we look at, uh, for example, a base tester object, uh, we need to have a get op and a get data function to uh, give us legal random values of data and object and and uh, operations and so we're going to get rid of that requirement and make our lives a lot easier by using transactions to store our data and move our data rather than moving it around in just variables there's several steps to creating a transaction and to changing a trend data into a transaction and we're going to start with the result that we pass around. So if you remember the result was a um, just a short int that's the output of the tiny ALU. If we look at the result transaction object uh, class here we see that we have a class named result transaction. It extends UVM transaction. Now UVM transaction is not a UVM component. Everything else that we've extended so far has been a form of UVM component intended to create the structure of the test bench. Uh, this is not a UVM component. It extends UVM object. And there are two implications to that. Uh, one is that instead of UVM component utils over here in our uh, factory registration macro, we use UVM object utils. So that now has, uh, that now works with UVM objects and not components. If you mix this up and you try to use UVM component utils here, you'll get a syntax error. And then the other implication is that our constructor is different. Uh, an object constructor doesn't have a parent class. That was that UVM component parent uh, argument to the constructor that just has the name. So you see here we have a string name and we say super.new name and that's our constructor for UVM component. Um, the rest of this, um, the rest of this class uh, we walk through and do a lot of the things that we uh, talked about in the previous uh, talk on deep uh, deep copies and deep operations. The result it has one data member and that is the short int result. So that's why we're using this one first. It's a little simpler. And we're going to provide some functions that are expected by the UVM if you're going to make a transaction. One is called do compare. If you have a transaction in the UVM you can call a method called compare and it will compare two transactions and tell you if they're the same. But it doesn't know how to compare transactions in the generic sense. What it does is it relies on you to provide this do compare override method. And do compare takes in the following arguments. It takes in a UVM object called RHS lowercase, the right hand side of the comparison. Uh, and also this object here, UVM comparer uh, and, of, and called comparer. Uh, that is an object that you can do things with to modify the way things are compared. We're not going to use it. We're just going to pass it on. Uh, we then, as we do with all deep operations, we create a, uh, a variable to hold our type. So we have a result transaction here called tested. And we have a bit called same. That, that bit will return a 1 if these are the same. First thing we try to do is cast the right-hand side and tested. If that fails, then these are not the same, and we set same to 0. Otherwise, if they are the same, then we call super dot do compare, as we talked about in the previous section on deep uh, operations. We pass it the right-hand side variable and the comparer, and then we compare, uh, and then we take the result of that, which if they're the same, it'll return a one, and we end that with our own test, which is to test the tested result against our own result. And if they're the same, and if super dot do compare is the same then the same bit is 1 and we return a 1. And if any of that stuff is different, we return a 0 because they're not the same. Similarly, uh, the uh, UVM relies on us to create a, uh, 
a, a function called do copy uh, that's used by it for copying and for cloning. Cloning is when we want to take a, uh, an object and create a clone of it, which is another object with a different handle but with all the same data. Both of those rely on this approach, which is to say um, we use this do copy to uh, copy data from the right hand side into ourselves. And again, this is a deep function, so it, it has this UVM object, RHS, has to be named RHS, that's a requirement. Um, and then the uh, and then we have our own copy uh, copied transaction of our own type. First thing we do is we check that RHS is not null. If it's null, then you're comparing a then we're trying to compare to a null pointer, and that's not legal, so we fatal out. <clears throat> then we check to make sure that the right hand side we've been given is the same type as us, and if it's not, then we fatal out. We do that by casting right here. You can see, and, we, and cast returns a one if it passes, so we invert it and check it and fade it out if it doesn't work. And then we call super dot do copy passing at the right hand side. This is a deep operation. And then we copy result from the copy transaction into ourselves. And so that's how we do a uh, that's how we do a do copy. And convert to string is also something that uh, it's good to have in your transactions. And in this case I just returned a string that contains our result. Now, if we also look, we, we can we have a command transaction, a little bit more complicated uh, because it's a little bigger. It has three variables, and what you'll notice about these variables is they all have this rand keyword in front of them. This means they can be randomized by system Verilog. We won't go into randomization much here. Uh, we cover it more in my other book, FPGA Simulation. But what this is saying is that if we call uh, transaction dot randomize, it will pick random values for these three variables. And in, in case of A and B, this constraint data here uh, does exactly what getop did. It, it gives us a one-third chance of zeros, a one-third chance of all ones, and a one-third chance of something in the middle. And if someone calls uh, randomize, the operation is only going to be one of the legal enumerated type values, so we don't have to worry about that business about there being eight possible bits in the opcode and, uh, and whittling it down to the, to the uh, legal things. We're just guaranteed to get a legal operation that way. Uh, do copy is the same as before, and uh, then there's clone me, which I write because I I don't like the the generic clone function that comes with the UVM. You see here, if I get past a uh, if, I, if someone wants a clone of me of my uh, of this object, uh, if they just call clone, they'll get a UVM object returned to them, and then they have to cast it to be whatever type this is. But I know what type I am, so what I do is I create this clone me function, and uh, I call clone myself. So I say uh, temp, temp is a UVM object, receives this dot clone. So now I have a clone of myself. I cast the clone to be a command transaction, and I return it, and that just makes it easier for people who want to use uh, this function and do cloning. Uh, do compare is as before. We check the right hand side. We check the cast. And we call do compare, and then we compare. The uh, compare all of our data fields with the uh, with the object that we received to compare, and finally convert to string prints out what this looks like. So now we've defined our data as transactions. Uh, in the next video, we're going to show how that changes other parts of the test bench because now those parts of the test bench will be moving transactions around instead of moving raw data.